Hey everyone, Sam McGuire here from Enterprise DNA. I want to talk about a really great scenario here uh, that some, I'm sure, have actually come across and, and you need to be quite um, innovative in how you actually solve it. There's a little bit to it. Now, the scenario is dealing with products that have changing prices. And this could happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe you, you change your prices based on the season that you're in. Maybe you change your prices based on some marketing or advertising that you do. And so you may know beforehand what uh, your pricing changes were, or, or sorry, or what they were actually historically. Um, and you want to be able to integrate that those price changes into your model. Now, what could happen and where the, the, the exact scenario where this would occur is that you might not have prices in your fact table. So what we're looking at here is I'm looking at this uh, the sales table. So just think of like a transaction table. And we don't actually have any pricing information available on here. If there was pricing in this table, then you probably wouldn't actually have to do this. Um, but uh, th this is quite common. I have seen uh, questions like this on the Enterprise DNA Support Forum where pricing, pricing is actually in a separate table and you need to integrate it in. Now, let's have a look at the table I created for this. So what I've done here, it's all, it is all grayed out actually, so I'll just ungray it because I, I like to clean up my tables. This is, a, this is actually a good tip actually. I really like to clean up my tables um, to only show what I need inside of my reporting um, a reporting canvas, so I don't so I clutter the um, the field section at all. But what I've got here is I've got every product and the price for every product in this particular scenario changes for the quarter. So I've got uh, a product name and I've got a quarter dimension, and then the price for say product one and quarter three is 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 this sixteen eighty. Um, but if we go find product one again. The price for Q4 is 2666. So, you know, for for example, in this in the um, in the Christmas period or something, we 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 increase the price um, quite a lot. So we need to somehow know that we're in a quarter here, and we know that this is what the price um, was was changed to. This is also a really good idea, especially if you're you know for, for future analysis, so forecasting and and. Um, uh, and scenario analysis, you might, in a lot of cases, um, need to forecast changes in prices. You might want to say, okay, well, in the next quarter, we're going to adjust all our prices um, by, up by 5%, um, but there's going to be some variability in that. Some are going to be up 5%, but we're going to discount some other ones uh, because uh, we want to get more people demand in the door um, via these marketing initiatives. So this, 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 this works historically, but also for um, future analysis as well. But the trick is, the trick is, how do we get it into our model? And this is this is this is the this is the interesting part here. We can only so you see this product pricing table here. Uh, the product table, the product table. Let's just jump out first. The product table is listing every single product once, right? So product one, product two, product three, product four. Okay, but the pricing product is referencing it multiple times. So a product is referenced multiple times. So we cannot make a relationship between this particular table, this product pricing table, and the sales table. There's actually no way for us to do that because there's there's multiple values here and you want the unique, you want the lookup table to be the unique side, okay? So what we need to do is we have to somehow get innovative in, in, in working out how we can take a data point from this particular table here when we're actually analyzing data from this, t in, in this table here. Okay. Now, this is how I did it. This is how I did it. Now, let's just have a look. Let's just have a look at a. Um, let's just double check though that we we have uh, are actually analyzing the right price. So when I, when I mocked this up, I just I, I I wanted to make doubly doubly sure that I had actually got it right. So I did a number of uh, additional things to just double check it. And here's the first one. Here's the first one. So what I wanted to do. Um, if we, have, if we have a look at this table down here that I'm that I've got. I'm circling with my mouse. This table has a product name. Then it has the. Just, this is just a placeholder. The average current price. This is just from an existing one. Just so that I could have a static price to compare against. And this average product pricing. This actually is changing. 
this is going to change based on the quarter that we we we, we select to so if we just have a look out at product one so in quarter three 1680 so that's what we were just looking at before right and then in q4 it should be 2666 which it is and so um this number is staying static which it should and this number is changing based on the selection which is exactly what we which is exactly what we wanted so how did i calculate this one first this is quite interesting now you've got to remember that there is actually no relationship between the date table which is where quarter comes from and the product pricing table that i showed you before there's no relationship so somehow when we make a selection here we need to we need to somehow filter this particular table here to make sure that the correct price for the quarter was coming through now the way i did that was i utilize treat as so treat as allows you to create these virtual relationships i've gone through it in a couple of model a uh, couple of videos so i would certainly um, search for those but what i've basically done is i've virtually created the relationship so the filter gets placed from product name that works fine but then this particular filter if we didn't have this wouldn't work so with the tree as it also will change based on the quarterly um the quarterly selection that we make as well so cool little trick there just uh just just to highlight how you can at least audit these numbers because that's that's the key thing we need to somehow audit it okay so then we wanted to then we wanted to and this is what this part of the um reporter showing we wanted to I, I want to compare okay what was our total sales uh historically based on just a, a, a one-off price this is just an old model where i just had one price uh, for, for everything i wanted to be able to compare that this total sales with price adjustment so this this total sales with price adjustment is this all of our sales but taking into account all of these pricing adjustments for quarters okay so how did i do this now let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the formula now actually i'll just jump to total sales so if we just have a look at total sales this is something i've, I've shown before and this is pretty standard this is an iterating function sum x you need to get your, your mind certainly around these what this is doing is it's iterating through every single row in the t in the sales table and it's going order quantity times the price this was the old calc this is the, the standard calc where there was just one price for everything for every single product and what we've done here is we've reached back into the product table uh, and we've gone and grabbed current price so we need to use some similar logic but you've got to remember that our model is slightly different we're not reaching back into the product table here now we're reaching back but then have to reach into this table to then go and find the adjusted price for the quarter so a little bit a little bit more to it a little bit more to it so this is how we do it this is how we do it now you see here total sales with price adjustment the sum x sales and then um so referencing the sales table then jumping to the quantity table this is exactly the same as before there's no different logic there but what i've done is i've used lookup value so lookup value is probably as close to a v lookup as you can possibly get and the great thing about lookup value is you don't actually need any relationships you can actually jump into other tables and you can do it within these sum x formulas you can actually jump into these other tables uh, without without any relationship just by referencing certain things um, or certain elements uh, in a particular um, in a particular table so what we're going what we're actually doing is we are looking up the pricing adjustment value which is the the quarterly change in price we're going to look up that particular column and we're going to return the result we're going to return one result based on what the product name is and so i've got product name here and with this related product name what this is doing is it is reaching up and at every single row evaluating okay what product is this and it's going into the um it's going into the product table to do that but then we also have to make sure that we're looking in the right quarter right and so what i've done here is i've said okay go and look at the quarter um what quarter we might be in in the product pricing table based on the current quarter that we are selected on or we we have in this particular context and what this is doing is it is actually doing a basically a, a, v, a, a, a type of v lookup inside of this table but then bringing it into the aggregation or iteration that we're doing over this table so at every single day what's happening is you uh, i set up this table to audit it every single day so in this particular day 20 26 of april 2018 we sold one product product 53. this total sales was our existing result 
and this is the total quantity that we sold but this total sales with price adjustment is actually taking into account is actually taking into account a new price so this this particular total sales is taking into account the 1526 this one I've got highlighted now but this particular result is taking into account the 1327 which is our, our product pricing adjustment for quarter two uh, in, in 2018. Well, it's actually just quarter two every single time. Okay, so a little bit to that, but this is a common requirement. I've seen this in a number of forums, especially in the Enterprise DNA support forum. And so I wanted to do a video on it. There's a little bit to it, but hopefully just by understanding what lookup value does. Um, also, another key thing to just check is your understanding of treat as, that's important as well. Um, but this is, there's, there's a lot of application for this, uh, you know, especially around um, forecasting, advertising, marketing, product price, price of products did not always stay constant. The cost of products didn't always stay constant. So you would have to use a combination of these techniques to actually solve these types of things. Okay, I'm gonna round it off there. I've gone a little bit longer than I wanted, but really interesting piece of analysis uh, and way that uh, you need to solve it inside of Power BI. So hopefully you got a lot out of it. I will um, see you on the next uh, tutorial. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and also um, if you like the content, throw the video a like. Really, really appreciate it. Really, really um, helps me out. Okay, all the best. Talk to you soon.